The scope of the lab is really to think again how light interacts with solids and how we can convert solar energies into electricity or how we can store solar energies into chemical bonds. So it's really how you can collect effectively solar photons using thin film materials with specific optical and electrical properties and how these photons can be effectively converted into electrical charges. Thin film technologies are really ways to deposit an alloy with specific elements onto a substrate. And the main way to create these thin films is really with vacuum chambers, again, where you have a physical piece of metal. Either you can evaporate that metal or you can bombard this metal with ions to create a vapor of a specific element. And again, this plume is gonna just travel into the vacuum chamber and eventually condense onto the substrate to form your thin film. In terms of efficiency, I would say thin films and standard crystalline silicon are pretty much at the same level at about 23 to 25% solar to electricity conversion. The reasoning behind using thin films is really to try to reduce either the weight or the cost. And the cost to create these solar panels would be greatly reduced if you use cheap uh, synthesis processes as opposed to vacuum-based technologies. What we try to do in my lab is to replace these very costly and labor-intensive techniques with cheaper methods using molecular inks that contains already all the chemical elements. We can formulate and create this ink directly in the glove box and we can essentially print or spray these inks onto a substrate. We don't need a vacuum chamber for this. We don't need high power, we don't need vacuum pumps. This type of approach allows us to study new materials that simply cannot be deposited with vacuum techniques, either because they are not compatible in a vacuum chamber or they just require very high temperature to be evaporated. When you report efficiencies in the PV world, on the solar world, you have to do that under very specific illumination conditions. And so instead of being outside and, and, and waiting for the sun and the, and the weather to cooperate, we actually have an artificial sunlight in the lab, so we can just do all our tests in the lab, comfortably sitting behind the computer with the AC running. We work with Stanford University, the University of Levada, NREL, as well as Laurent Livermore National Laboratory. So it's really through the collaboration that we actually flourish and, and expand our research really here in Hawaii. I should say that the work that we do in the lab is not necessarily out for commercialization yet. Still looking at technologies that could be applied maybe 10, 15 years from now. And I think as far as HNI is concerned and the collaboration that we have, it's extremely important to look at the technologies that are today and see how these technologies can be integrated in the grid. And overall, could we even add more of these PV modules onto the grid with the help of storage as batteries or through the integration of fuel cell and hydrogen technology.